Now let us examine this concept of what is called consumer sovereignty. Now consumer sovereignty is this idea that production decisions are actually driven by consumer preferences. Now is this true? We can explore this idea by looking at two examples. Let's start first with an example of a good that I think will never be produced. For example, if a manufacturer of candy came up with a flavour and exclusively just sell this single flavour of candy, and this flavour is called earwax. So if this manufacturer, this candy manufacturer, manufactures earwax candy and sells it to you, would you buy? Would there be anyone who would buy earwax flavoured candy such that the manufacturer is able to turn a profit and maintains its survival and keeps going on? No, right? So in that case, what will happen likely is that this earwax candy manufacturer will be shut down and resources will be deployed towards the production of other goods and services. And this shows us that consumer sovereignty is well and alive. Now in recent years, especially in advanced economies, we have started to develop a taste for being healthy. And yet we don't want to give up certain preferences that we have previously had. Like for example, if you enjoy Coke and you find that Coke is super unhealthy because of the high sugar, you'll be pleased to find out that Coke now has Coke Stevia. Coke Stevia has reduced sugar, which gives you an excuse okay, to drink more Coke. Right, and so why did Coke create a version of Coke that has less sugar? That is because we as consumers have started to demand for healthier alternatives. And this shows that consumer sovereignty is well and alive. But yet, we've also found reasons to believe that consumer sovereignty might be more of a myth and that actually uh, there's no such thing. For example, there are some kind of products that we never knew we wanted them until they were produced. Smartphones like the iPhones didn't exist until Steve Jobs came along and invented. And we found that since Steve Jobs invented the iPhone, we have all started to actually move on to the smartphone revolution and all of us today were mostly using smartphones. And so we found out that that was something that was driven by the producer as opposed to the consumer and we found something that we want that we never knew we want. And so that actually puts the question of consumer sovereignty to be a huge question mark. 